because from this it follows that the set of lines of circles and lines now onwards I'll just call lines as circles usually is preserved by z goes to alpha z okay if you plug it in here you'll see what happens to the terms they all get give you terms of the other form using the lower representation this is easier also z goes to uh, z plus beta and most interestingly z goes to 1 over z okay so even this preserves it because you see these two terms get flipped in that case when z goes to 1 over z the q term and the p term kind of get flipped when you uh, clean out the equation by the way these equations may give you empty sets and so on so I'm not saying this always gives you non-empty circle but you'll get all the circles and it's easy to see what happens there so z goes to 1 over z okay that intersects uh, changes these terms hence by all maps all well bijections at any rate of this form z goes to alpha z plus beta by gamma z plus delta okay and this is the key point that whatever bijection we have we've used two such bijections one of them were a z plus b by c z plus d and the other was the one that related the upper half plane to the unit disk okay and now let me just observe one more fact these I mean these here also preserve angles okay this is because any holomorphic function preserves angles that's a characterizing property of being holomorphic okay so we have something in hand okay namely we have found a bunch of symmetries and seen how they act on lines and circles so we can find more hyperbolic geodesics okay based on this following very simple principle let me say this once explicitly namely if uh, whatever phi is an isometry say upper half plane to upper half plane is an isometry then uh, gamma is a geodesic if and only if phi of gamma is a geodesic And so we have a bunch of geodesics. So if you want to check something else as a geodesic, if we can map it to a vertical line, it's a geodesic. And conversely, if we take a vertical line and map it, okay, so under this transformation, we get a geodesic. Okay. So let's do that. So we are applying whatever phi of z of this form, a z plus b by c z plus d to vertical lines we get geodesics well what happens though this is not the whole of the vertical line right it's half of it so we have the upper half plane like this and we have the geodesic part which is the top part it extends below something else okay well we get geodesics well what do they look like they are of the form c intersection h c circle or line of course in general <coughs> but we also know something else about it what we know now oh, upper half plane <coughs> c is orthogonal To H. The argument I've said is not quite complete, but it's easy to just replace the completion by calculation. Okay, to complete it by calculation. The point here is simply that this angle which the circle makes with the horizontal line is the same as the angle 
that uh, the vertical line makes with the real line. So that's 90 degrees. Of course, one of these angles is mapped to infinity. So this argument by itself is not complete, but it's easy to complete it. Okay. So so this so we know that here the red one is a geodesic. Okay. So just so 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 conclusion. So from this, what we can conclude is exactly that geodesics are arcs of circles and here circles includes lines or lines intersecting are orthogonally okay couple of points here a line intersecting are orthogonally is of course exactly a vertical line and a circle intersecting are orthogonally actually has its center contained in uh, r for, for a certain reason i'm not putting it that way but it's useful to remember this that you could think of these either as all alternatively as vertical lines and semicircles with center being on r